Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, today's topic will be uh, a couple of very small, very small and very simple uh, problems in the area of quadratic equations. Now, um, why these problems um, have to be addressed? First of all, there are some formulas which we touched during the lecture, um, the formulas for solutions of any, any quadratic equation. So why do we need problems? Just have the formula and basically substitute all the uh, coefficients in the formula and you got the solutions. Well, yes, obviously. Um, the, however, there are some reasons which um, really are uh, much more important in this particular case. First of all, you can forget the formula. And all of a sudden, you're facing with uh, necessity to uh, solve some quadratic equation, and you forgot the formula. Well, that's not such a big deal, because you always have to remember how the whole formula was derived. And that's exactly why I um, want to uh, solve a couple of problems, because the way how I will solve these problems um, is exactly the way how we derived the formula during the lecture. So it's easy to forget the formula. However, the approach you probably should always keep in mind. And again, in case you forgot the formula, you can always use this approach. At the same time, it's still useful to uh, approach certain uh, problems, not from the formula basis, but just from the logical thinking. How, you, how would you address this particular problem if you don't know any formulas? So it's kind of a teaching. Um, uh, problems, I would say. Illustrational for the approach we used during the derivation of the formula itself. Um, so I have two different equations here. Um, and uh, first of all, I would like to say that we are going to solve these equations in the area of real numbers. Um, for complex numbers, we will have different set of uh, problems. Um, so number one, the domain is real numbers. Number two, um, I have different equations here. I have prepared three different equations. One will have two different uh, solutions. Another will have only one, and the third one will have none. But we will come to this gradually as it comes. So um, number one is 2x squared minus 5x minus 3 equals to 0. So, um, I don't know any formulas. I would like to derive some uh, solutions of this particular equation purely logically, more or less the same way as I derived in general case, with general um, coefficients during the lecture. And that's exactly what I would like you to try. Um, the approach which uh, I will uh, use, I will try to represent this as a square of something equal to something. For instance, basically uh, x minus a, for instance, square equals to b. If I will be able to represent it in this particular form, then I can always derive x minus v, just square root of b, um, and, and then x. So this is also a quadratic equation. So if I will be able to derive from this, this, with certain a and b, then my solution would be much easier. So that's the general approach. Simplify your equation to a form which is easily to, to solve. In this case, in the case of quadratic equation, this is basically uh, the most simple and uh, easily solvable uh, type of quadratic equation. So you have to transform this into this, and then the problem will be almost solved. So that's the approach. I would like you to think about this, press the pause button, try to do it yourself, and, um, and I will basically do exactly this uh, with the board right now. So I would like to have something like x minus a square. Well, first of all, the coefficient the coefficient with x squared is 1, and this is not. Uh, this is 2 in this particular case. So to represent this in this form, first of all, I have to divide everything by this coefficient um, with uh, x squared. 
to have it one. Okay. So my first transformation will be I will I will divide the whole equation, which is uh, uh, invariant transformation by two, and as a result I will have x squared minus five second x minus three second equals to zero. So this is invariant transformation. I divided both uh, sides of the equation by two. No solutions are lost or gained. Everything is fine. So x squared I already have, right? Now if this is x squared, then this is obviously this. And then I will worry about all, this, uh, all, all, all the free coefficients without any um, unknown variables x. So if minus 5 second is minus 2a, what does it mean? Well, it means that a is equal to I multiply both sides by minus 1, that's uh, invariant transformation, and then divide by 2, so it's 5, 4. So I've got my a. Now, if I will change this into this, I subtract b from both sides, so I will transfer b to the left and put it equal to zero. Then obviously, <coughs> then obviously a squared minus b is minus three seconds, right? Now, I know that a is five fourths, so what's the b? Well, if a squared minus b is minus three seconds, and a is 5 fourths, then obviously I will have uh, 5 fourths square, which is 25 sixteenths minus b is equal to minus 3 seconds. So what's the b out of it? Well, multiply everything by 16, so we will have 25 minus 16b equals to minus, uh, that would be 24. So 16b, uh, I, I add 16b to both sides. So 16 will go on the right, and then I will add, add 24 to both sides. 24 will, 24 will go on the left. So we'll have 25 plus 24, 49, equals to 16b. So b is equal to 49 16. So, as you see, we have transformed our equation, original equation, first to this form, and then using these a and b, we transform it into this form. So I can say that my equation right now looks like x minus a, a is 5 fourths, square, equals to b, which is 49 sixteenths. This and this are exactly the same. If somebody wants to make sure that that's really the case, let's just think about this. This is x minus uh, 5 second x plus 25 sixteenths. This is 49 sixteenths. So if 25 sixteenths uh, and, and 49 sixteenths, that's uh, 49 minus 25, 24. So it's minus 24 sixteenths. Uh, reduced by 8, 3, 8, yeah, 3, 3 seconds, yes, that's exactly what it is, we did not make any mistakes. All right, so, original equation, we have reduced to this form, which is very easy to solve, because now, 
we can use the square root for both sides. This is not an invariant transformation, but we will be very careful. And we will use the absolute value of x minus 5 fourths. The positive part of it is equal to square root of 49 16 is 7 fourths, obviously, right? Because 7 squared is 49, 4 squared is 16. Great. So if this is an, a, a final equation, it means that either x minus 5 fourths is equal to 7 fourths. That's one solution. And another solution is 7, x minus 5 fourths is equal to minus 7 fourths. That's what absolute value means. So the positive, well, um, from this, x is equal to 5 fourths. We add 5 fourths to both sides. We will have 12 fourths reduced by 4, that's 3. Now, 5 fourths on the right side minus 7, it will be 2 fourths. So it will be 1 half, minus 1 half. Is that right? Well, just in case, let's check. x is equal to 3, square will be 9, times 2 will be 18, minus 5 times 3, 15. 18 minus 15 is 3, minus 3, 0. Good enough. Um, minus 1 half. Square will be 1 fourth, so it will be 2 fourths, which is 1 half. Minus 5 halves. Now, 5 halves is 1 half minus 5 half is minus 4 half. No, minus, so I think I made a mistake somewhere. Did I? One half is one fourth. All right, let's do it this way. Two times one fourth um, minus that's plus five second minus three minus three. Now plus because minus five and minus one half it will be plus. Five. Okay, now this is two fourths which is one half plus 2 halves minus 3. This is 6 halves minus 3, which is 3 minus 3, 0. Everything is fine. OK, so checking is OK. Both are solutions. And as you see, um, using this transformation, transformation into this form, allows us to very easily um, solve the problem. Now we will continue doing exactly the same thing with the other um, couple of problems which I have. Okay, next problem. Next problem is this. 4x squared plus 12x plus 9 equals to 0. And again, my purpose is to reduce it to the form x minus a squared equals b. Let's see what happens. Well, again, first of all, 4 really stands in the way, because I would like that to be x squared minus 2ax plus a squared minus b equals to 0. You understand I... Um, subtracted b from both sides, open the parentheses and subtract b. And now 4 actually stands in the way, so I have to divide the whole equation by 4, um, which is invariant transformation, no problems with that. And that would be x squared plus 12 over 4, that's 3x plus 9 fourths. So my x squared matches this one. So what should be my a? If 2 minus 2a two is equal to 3, 
So my A is equal to minus 3 seconds, right? Now, and A squared minus B should be 9 fourths. Considering A is 3 seconds, A squared is A squared minus B is uh, 3 seconds squared will be 9 fourths minus B. And that should be equal to 9 fourths. So B is equal to 0 from here. So my equation actually becomes B is equal to 0 and A is equal to minus 3 seconds. x minus 3 over minus 3 over 2 it will be plus 3 over 2 square is equal to b which is 0 well let's check just in case that this is the same as this x square plus uh, 2 times x times 3 over 2 that's 3x 3x plus the square of this one, which is 9, 4. Everything is great. So, what's interesting about this particular example, this particular problem, is that on the right I have 0. When I um, use the square root in both cases, I will have an absolute value of x plus 3 over 2 is equal to 0. Now, if absolute value of something is equal to 0, it's not like positive or minus uh, or negative. There is only one zero. Last time we had something like, I don't remember, 7 over 2 or something like this. So it was plus 7 over, uh, 7 over, over 2 and minus 7 over, over 2. In this case, 0 plus 0 or minus 0 is exactly the same thing. So this is example when both solutions, I use the word both because usually quadratic equations have two solutions. Both, both solutions are the same, so it's a double solution, so to speak. And solution is, obviously, x equals to minus 3 over 2 to make it 0. Again, let's check it out, just in case. Uh, 3 over 2 square will be 9 over 4 times 4 minus 12 times 3 is 36 over 2 plus 9. Now this is 9. This is minus 36 over 2, 18 and plus 9, 0. Everything is fine. Okay? So that's an example of an equation which has only one solution. Well, we use the term double solution if you wish. But anyway, it's only one number. Okay, that's example number three. And number four, sorry, that was number two, and this is number three. Okay, the last one. 3x squared minus 18x plus 13 equals to 0. Good moment to press the pause button and do it yourself right now. Um, now, I will uh, do exactly the same thing as before. I want to transform it into this particular form, or if you wish, x squared minus 2ax plus x squared minus b is equal to 0. That's the form I would like to transform it for into. Okay, now, this is x squared, this is 3x squared, so I divide everything by 3, that's number 1, obviously, so I have x squared minus 6x plus 10 equals 0. Great. Now, if minus 2x is minus 6, x, then a is equal to 3, 
right? A is equal to 3. Minus 2 times 3 times x, that's exactly mine. Now, so a squared minus b is supposed to be 10, right? Now, a is 3, so it's 9 minus b equals 10 from which b is equal to minus 1. And that's very important. b is equal to minus 1. You see, b is on the right. On the left, we have a square of something, of a real number. Don't forget, we are solving in the real numbers right now. The domain of the solutions is the set of all real numbers. Obviously, no real number square will give minus 1. That's the complex numbers where we will have the number i, which will give this. But that's not what we are considering right now. Right now we are talking only about real numbers. There is no real number square of which is equal to minus 1. So what's, what does it mean? It means there is no solution. So among the real numbers, this particular equation has no solutions. And that's the final point which I wanted to make um, with this problem number 1, which is actually three different little uh, exercises. And again, the most important part so far was to transform our original equation into this form, which is very easily solvable, just because we can have the square root of, of, of both sides, if possible, if it's, um, if it's not negative on the right. OK. That basically con concludes the algebraic part of these three equations. Now I would like to illustrate everything geometrically. Now, if I have an equation, then whatever is on the left which is a polynomial of the second degree, uh, power of 2, it's represented by some kind of parabola. Now, the horns of this parabola are directed either upward or downward, depending on the coefficient, if I have something like a x squared plus b x plus c is equal to 0. If this is my original equation, then this coefficient determines what exactly the uh, direction of the horns of the parabola are. If it's positive, then it's upward. If it's negative, it's downwards. So that's number one. Number two, solutions to this equation is when this parabola is crossing um, the y equals 0 axis, which is this horizontal axis. So this parabola has two solutions. This parabola has no solutions because it doesn't cross the uh, x-axis. And this parabola, which just, just touches this particular x-axis, has one solution which can be called double. So my original three equations which I had are actually illustrations to all these three cases. One case when parabola doesn't touch it, another is when there are two solutions, and, and yet another one when, when there is only one solution but it's uh, doubled. Now, let's just make it uh, more concrete in each of those cases. Uh, so I will try to, to draw a, a graph, and we will see how it actually illustrates. So again, let's start from the beginning. 2x squared minus 5x minus 3 is equal to 0. I, 
divided this thing by 2, x squared minus 5, 2, x minus 3 is equal to 0. And represented this as x minus 5 over 4 square, right? Because that would give me 5 over 2x, x squared minus 5 over 2x. And then um, I have 25 over 16. So I have to subtract 25 over 16 and minus 3. And that would be my equation. So just let me combine these together. Um, 3 is uh, uh, 25 sixteenths and minus 3. <coughs> So what, what, what were the roots of that? I don't remember. Hmm. Is that right? I thought it was plus. Hmm. Let me just check it again. So I have x minus a square is equal to b, right? So it's x squared minus 2x, 2ax plus a squared minus b is equal to 0. Okay, so this is covered by this. So a is equal to 5 fourths. So 25 over 16, aha, uh -huh, here it is, minus b is equal to 0. Uh, sorry, is equal to minus 3. Is equal to minus 3. Right? Minus 3. So b is equal to uh, B goes to the right, 3 goes to the left. It's 48 minus 25 sixteenths. All right? Something is wrong. No, plus. Plus is no good name. Five fourths. The check. Five. Oh, I know why. Hmm. That's my mistake. It's not three. It's three seconds. I divided by two. See, that's my mistake. Okay. Fine. So let's just change this a little bit. I see it's some unusual numbers which I didn't really plan for. Okay, now it's different. So now it's i x minus 5 over 4 square plus, well, actually minus 25 16, because this is plus 25 16, if I open the parentheses, and minus 3 second is equal to 0. Okay, now that's better, because now this is, instead of 3 second, I will put, multiply by 8, it will be 24 sixteenths, right? Now minus 25 and minus 24 sixteenths is 49 sixteenths. So I'll change this to minus 49 sixteenths. Now that's familiar number. I remember that. Okay, now... I can draw a graph of this particular uh, polynomial. Now, if you remember, if I take the graph 
of function y is equal to x squared. That would be a parabola which goes like this. Almost perfect. Now, next is, let's draw the graph x minus 5 fourths squared. Now, if you remember what happens with the graph if I substitute instead of x, x minus something, well, the whole graph shifts to the right by this something. For obvious reasons, so in this case, if this is 5 fourths, the parabola will be like this. New parabola. Because for the value of x is equal to 5 fourths, this graph is exactly the same as this one when x is equal to 0. And for the x is equal to 5 fourths plus anything, it's the same as this graph when x is equal to that anything. So the whole thing is actually shifted to the right. This graph is shifted by 5 fourths to the right from the original y is equal to x squared. So that's covering, that's, uh, we were talking about this part. Now we have to subtract something from the graph. Now subtract means the whole graph shifts down by in this case, since it's minus, it's down, so it's 49 sixteenths. So if this is minus 49 sixteenths, the whole graph will shift down to this position, and still its horns will be upwards. And wherever the roots of this equation are, and the roots are, let's do it again, it's x minus 5, 4, absolute value is equal to square root of, which is 7 fourth. Now, which means that x minus 5, 4 is equal to plus or minus 7 fourths. If it's plus, then it will be 12 over 4, it will be x is equal to 3. And if it's minus, it will be um, 2 over minus, okay, minus, minus 1 half. So this point is minus 1 half, and this point is 3. Well, the scale is obviously not very good. But in any case, this is the final parabola, and crossing uh, of this parabola with the x-axis, which is 3 and minus 1 half, are exactly the solutions. So this is a graphical representation of the same thing. Now let's continue with the two other examples. Example number 2. I hope I will not make an arithmetic mistake with the number 2. So we have 4x squared minus plus 12x plus 9 is equal to 0. So uh, first I divided it by 4, so it's x squared plus 3x plus 9 fourth is equal to 0. Now this is x plus 3 over 2 squared. just to get 3 here, x squared plus x times 3 seconds times 2, that's 3x. And so this is already 9 fourths. So basically my 9 fourths is already covered. That's the same thing. So this is parabola again, which is shifted by 3 over 2, but to the left in this case, because this is a plus sign. So geometrically, it looks like this on the graph. If this is minus 3 over 2, it will be a parabola which is which looks like this. And again, crossing with the x-axis is only in one point, and this is the point minus 3 over 2. Finally, my third example, where if you remember we did not have any real solutions, 
is 3x squared minus 18x plus 30 equals to 0. First, we divided by 3. That was easier. Minus 6x plus 10 is equal to 0. This is x minus 3 squared. Now, that would be 9, right? So I have to minus 9 and plus 10 is equal to 0. So this is minus 1. Uh, I mean, plus 1. Okay, let's draw the graph again. We have the original location uh, of, uh, of our parabola. Shift it first to the right by 3. That's my list one. But now we have to move it up by 1. So the whole graph will look like will look like this. So this part this particular parabola, as you see, has no crossings with an x-axis, and that means there are no real solutions. Well, that basically concludes all three examples which I wanted to talk about. So let me just summarize very briefly. What's most important in all of these cases was the illustration that you don't really have to uh, remember relatively complex formula for um, quadratic equation, for solutions to quadratic equation. If you have any quadratic equation, your purpose is to bring it to this form, from which you can obviously very easily conclude that x minus a absolute value is equal to square root of b, which does have real solutions if b is not negative. So x minus a is equal to square root of b or minus x minus a is equal to square root of b. Or if you wish, I can multiply by minus 1 both parts and have minus here. Or if you wish to do it even more shortly, that's how sometimes it's expressed. Both solutions are expressed in one formula, but using plus minus from which, obviously, we have x is equal to a plus minus square root of b by adding uh, a to both sides. So this is a solution If you transform your equation into this format, then this is the obvious solution. And that's probably the most important part which you have to remember from these exercises. Just simplify your equation to this form, and then the solution will be very natural and easy. And from the graphical representation, again, remember that parabola uh, is supposed to cross the x-axis in either two points then there are two solutions. That's when the b is uh, positive. One point, if b is equal to 0, and that would be the point x is equal to a solution, and one and only. And then there are no solutions if b is negative, because the square of the real number cannot be negative. There are no x's. Well, that's it for today. Good luck. And uh, don't forget, check the unisor.com, where there are many other lectures and uh, problems and exercises available. Thank you very much.